G'day Trendsetters, Greg here from Fish Play Films and welcome back to the BNSF Bourbon Subdivision. And like I promised, we are looking at plaster cloth today. We'll get straight into it. And I'm really happy with the results with the brown paper on our last first ever scenery video, Trendsetters. That's right. And I did promise that we'd do plaster cloth very soon. So here it is. So let's get into it and we'll show you how I do it. Okay, we've got our plaster obviously, our cloth, and we've got our tray of water. And I try to have uh, cut the plaster in smaller pieces, manageable pieces, and they fit nicely in this tray without folding it over. If you're going to do bigger pieces, you could use a paint roller tray. A lot of people use that. And, uh, but for the, the thickness I'm using, the, this uh, meat tray or chicken tray works really well. Now, what I've done, we'll have to see how wide we need this piece and we'll cut it up and we'll put it on there and I know for a fact that I need it about roughly this long here this is sort of a bit of a test bit so that goes in nicely there so we'll just cut that now a lot of people have said or a few people have said uh, why using plaster cloth it's expensive you could use paper towels you could use the shop cloth so we call them uh, chucks down here uh, well the plaster cloth is expensive if you buy it like from model train stuff or scenic, you know, the, the train supply stuff. But if you buy it from a craft supplies, it's a hell of a lot cheaper. Now this roll here, you can see how wide that is there. I've hardly used any off that and I've got six of these rolls here in Brizzy for $40. And I reckon one of these rolls would do nearly half the layout possibly. Small, small bits like this. The six rolls I got, I reckon I'll do the layout almost completely. If not, I only need a couple more. And it was $40 for six of these rolls. Now, if you go and look at uh, buying it from the model railroad supplies, it's probably 10 or 15 times that amount. You get 10 square metres for $10 or something. So that's why I'm using plaster cloth. I'm just going to give a test fit here. That's pretty good. There, like that. Now, the other thing... Uh, people said, you know, you could use paper towels. Uh, no, I'm not going to use paper towels because can you imagine having a tub of plaster that's going off and I'm trying to learn how to do scenery and you're dipping the, the paper towel in here, you take it out, bits and pieces break off it. Now, it might be okay if you're experienced, you've been doing it for a long time and you don't want to make a mess. I'm actually doing this with trains running past here and I've hardly made any, any mess at all. So it's horses for courses. But for me, no, I won't be using paper towel. Um, the shop cloth is not a bad idea, but you still have to have a tub of plaster that's going off. So for me, uh, no, I would rather buy my plaster cloth in bulk and do it like that. So I'm not gonna fold it over, this is big enough. Now, I've, re I've watched some people, you know, put it in the water and take it out virtually straight away. I like to leave it for about 10 or 20 seconds. So it really activates that plaster. And then it seems to work a lot nicer. So, because you leave it in too long, it's no good, but. Now, because we're going around a curve here, I'm going to work around the bottom here first. And we'll do this one, then we'll get a close-up shot of how we do that. Now, it's a good idea to use either a wet finger, or I really like a brush. I've got a brush here, but I'll start off with a wet finger just to get the plaster through on the bottom here. Change over to a brush. And you can see, we'll get a close up in a minute, but you will see, oops, I'm not there. The brush is dragging some of the plaster through and making, reacting it with the other plaster. And it's getting a really nice little jobby there. You can see when the plaster starts to go a little bit uh, soft, and then you know you, you can work it in there. Now also, there is a lumpy side and a smooth side to the plaster. That's important too. Always put the lumpy side out, because that's the side that has more plaster on it. And the smooth side goes to the back, or underneath. So 
So just start smoothing that out there. A wet, a wet finger is really good actually. I, as the bishop said to the stripper, just to get it stuck there you know, and work your way out that way so you don't pull the plaster cloth off. Now see how well this brush works here for just blending this in. Now, you know, I've seen lots of videos on plaster cloth and uh, they're all very haphazard and, you know, rough and all that as you probably normally do. I'm probably being way too fussy here with it. But I am working in a small area. So, you know, it's a little bit different than working on a big layout somewhere where you've got a lot of room. So this brush is really nice there. You can see how that's blending that plaster in there. Now this track's live. There's a train coming along here soon, Transitors. We can't stop, can't stop traffic, you know, for work on the Birdwood sub. Things have to keep going. And you see the brush here, it's just starting to uh, pick that plaster up and activate it. Because you want the plaster activated, you just don't want it sort of sitting there. And yes, you're probably saying you're going way too fussy with that, Greg, way too fussy. But that's all right. You see where it's where those light, those holes there are still quite sharp. You just want to blur those you know holes a little bit so you know you're activating the play. You'll see it there like that. This is almost too easy, Trent. If I can do this, literally anybody could. And you know, this is the this is the understory. Now, another thing I was concerned about were these ridges from the cardboard strips. And it's really not a problem because what will happen, you'll be putting plaster over them anyway, or rock moulds over them, and there'll be another layer of plaster cloth. Probably two, I think two's probably enough. Depending on you know where you are and what you're doing. And I've just overlapped that by probably a couple of centimetres, half an inch or something. But now that's that's uh, that's gone down very nice down the bottom there. Very nicely indeed. I'll just drag that across there. Well, Trent, that is there you go. Who'd have thunk it? Uh, that's my take on plaster cloth. And I say, if you buy it, in bulk like I did, so I've got six of these rolls, so I've used bugger all this one so far uh, for $40 off the net. Have a look, go to craft stores or sculpting stores or stuff like that uh, rather than buying small uh, quantities from model railroad stores. Cheap as chips, and I'm really happy how it's working. I might do another cover over this, I might not, I might just put plaster over that and I might think that that's strong enough. Uh, it's only a small area. And of course the cardboard strips are behind it, so it's, uh, the stuff up here is uh, pretty much rock hard. And I've put a little bit of uh, a little cover of plaster over one piece here and it's solid as a rock, I should say. <laughs> no, I just got to wave at the train to say I've seen it. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm really happy with it. And I so say using that wet brush, of, as I mentioned, dipping the brush in water and dragging it up uh, to activate the plaster it works really well or you can use keep dipping your finger in water and just move it along make sure that plaster activates so it sticks to the bottom and goes nice and nice and smooth and then of course your next layer go over the top to strengthen a little bit and of course I could have used bigger pieces but I like using a piece that's manageable and of course as you see the train running through here now I did clean the track trend setters I just gave it a quick wipe with you know the inox on the rag there's a little couple of drops of water there but of course if I was using plaster cloth, shop cloths with uh, a bucket of plaster somewhere, you're really stressed for time because that plaster is going off and every time you bring your cl uh, cloth across you're going to be dripping bits of plaster and and even if you've got the track covered, I, no, you can't sell me on that idea unless you're doing a big mountain somewhere and you can just go crazy and put crap everywhere. But for this, I'm loving the plaster cloth principle. So, Hope you enjoyed that. I had a look at a lot of uh, plastic cloth videos. A lot of them were very quick and rough and all that sort of thing. So I thought I'd probably do, I'd do one to show you how you can use it in you know fine areas and uh, not have to have crap going everywhere. I love it. I love it. I love it. Got my rock mold. So in the next couple of weeks, 
who knows what will happen trans it's just it's just going crazy it's crazy and this little bit area here i'm not going to show you this area there's a little bit area here where uh the plaster cloth goes up next to a, a tunnel portal and you turn that bell off driver goodness me and it's actually looking really nice and surprising i'm surprised how 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 easy it is transit anyway that's it it's a quickie plaster cloth give it a go transit give it a go and buy it in bulk as i say six of these 40 bucks that's australian prices transit from just down the road and i will see you in a couple of weeks with plastering first and then rock knives we'll see what happens anyway i don't want to give you too much of a shock in one go thanks for watching appreciate all the support and especially on the views with the uh paper brown paper the first lot of scenery trend service that's broken some records as far as views are concerned thank you very much we'll see you on the next one very very soon Guru for now bye bye